Itmo. It is March and that means that it's almost time for opening day of baseball season. It's March 27th right now. It's a Monday. The start of baseball season is in just a few days on March 30th. Opening day this year for baseball season in America is March 30th and as you may know from watching this channel, my husband really really loves baseball. I enjoy baseball. I've become more of a fan obviously since meeting him but I like it and I think that it's a really interesting sport in America compared to a lot of other sports that are played, professional sports that are played here. So I thought it would be fun to do a baseball vlog. I had originally wanted to read a few books for this vlog but time is getting short so I think I'm just going to read one book for this vlog. The book that I want to read is Murder in Wrigley Field by Crab Evers. I picked this book up in a church book sale last year at some point. I love the cover. It's pretty amazing and I just thought it was a cute idea for a cozy mystery. This is part of a series. Each book focuses on a different ball field and obviously this one focuses on Wrigley Field in Chicago. It's the 27th now. I have today, the 28th, the 29th, and maybe the 30th. So four days. This book is under 250 pages so I think I can read it in four days or less and I think it would be fun to post this video on opening day. So we will start reading this book. I really don't know anything about it other than it's a cozy mystery set in Wrigley Field. That's all I really need to know. If you've watched my videos, especially if you watch my haul videos, I pick up baseball books whenever I see them, partly for my husband, partly for me. They don't really go on my TBR. They're more of a collection than anything else, but I am interested in them. We have a lot of baseball books in our house, reference books, picture books, coffee table type, type books, but these are books that I actually went through and picked up myself. One of those books is Ball Four. I did actually start reading this in 2021. I didn't get very far. I think I only got about a quarter of the way through. This is written by and about Jim Bowden. It's actually a epistolary nonfiction and it's his diary of being in the major leagues, getting knocked down to the minors, and then coming back up to the major leagues. It's full of anecdotes and funny stories that he has, observations about baseball, as well as his own experiences in the major leagues. So this is a really interesting book. It is very long and it is quite repetitive in a lot of ways because it does talk a lot about the technical side of baseball which if you are a casual fan such as I am is a little bit hearts which is why I eventually did put this down and have not picked it up again yet. I had thought when I was going to do this vlog earlier that I would try to read more of this or possibly finish it but now that we're only four days out I'm definitely not going to. So this might be one that I pick up again in like nonfiction November or something like that. It was really interesting and I was enjoying it, but I just haven't gotten back to it yet. Some other baseball books that I picked up over the last couple of years are R.A. Dickey's two books. So R.A. Dickey is a knuckleball pitcher. He has a really interesting story coming up from the minor leagues where he was a normal pitcher and then was injured and he realized that he was missing a tendon in his arm which caused him to reevaluate his whole career and become a knuckleball pitcher which is very rare in the sport. So this is Throwing Strikes by R.A. Dickey and Wherever I Wind Up by R.A. Dickey. R.A. Dickey is close to my heart because he is from Tennessee which is where my husband is from and also he played for the Mets when I first became a Mets fan. So Mets are my team so Ari Dickey is definitely a favorite pitcher of mine. He also has a really interesting life story. He was sexually abused as a child. He is quite religious but he isn't overly preachy with his Christian religion so I think it would be interesting to learn his story one day. These are probably books that I would rather have as a collection than read outright. I have read articles that Ari Dickey wrote. He wrote for the New York Times for a while. So I do know that he's a fairly interesting writer, but these are ones that maybe I'd rather like read on audio or I don't know, maybe not even actually read, but definitely having them in my collection is fun. Next we have Luckiest Man, The Life and Death of Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig was a notable baseball player, especially because the term Lou Gehrig's disease was coined around him because he was one of the people who was studied with that disease. This is probably going to be a very interesting story of his life and times in baseball as well as his illness leading up to his death. Um, Jonathan Igg is an interesting author. I've 
seen him quite a few times writing about topics that I'm interested in. He's a nonfiction writer. I don't really know anything about him, but like I said, there's a, quite a few books on my want to read list that were written by him. So I am interested in checking this one out one day and reading this one. I think also the era of this is a little bit more my style than the R.A. Dickey books. This is just another cool copy of Ball Four with sprayed edges. A book that I didn't pick up but we have is Baseball Legends of Brooklyn's Greenwood Cemetery by Peter J. Nash. This is a nonfiction book about Greenwood Cemetery and the famous baseballers who are interned there. Greenwood Cemetery is a huge cemetery in Brooklyn. We used to live right by it when we lived in Brooklyn. It was one of our favorite places to visit. We used to go there often and it is notable for having lots and lots of famous New Yorkers. The artist Basquiat is interned there as well as many other famous New Yorkers and lots of baseball players. My mother-in-law gave this to us and I'm excited to go through it and read it one day. Another non-fiction baseball book is The Catcher Was a Spy, The Mysterious Life of Mo Berg by Nicholas Dawdorf. This is a true account of Mo Berg who was a baseballer but who was also a spy for Europe during World War II. I especially want to read this one because he went to Princeton University and as you know, as you may know, I live pretty close to Princeton and it's a place that we visit fairly often throughout the year. I'm always interested in people from New Jersey, their stories, and learning more about New Jersey history as well as baseball history. A book that I'm super interested in reading is You Gotta Have a Wall When Two Cultures Collide on the Baseball Diamond by Robert Whiting. This is another nonfiction baseball book about how American baseball influenced J Japanese baseball and how Japanese baseball influenced American baseball. Many cultures and many countries play baseball as we know it today, but Japan is one of the leading countries that do so with a huge baseball following in that country and they have very specific guidelines and ideas of how to play the game that differ from the U.S. So I think that this one would be a really interesting one to read, to learn about those cultural differences, those field of play differences, and find out more about how the two countries influence each other. That's most of my baseball book collection. Let me know if you've read any books about baseball. Let me know if you've ever read Murder in Wrigley Field. And when I start reading this, I will definitely check back in with you and let you know what I think of this baseball cozy mystery. Make sure to tell me in the comments below if you are a baseball fan and if you are, who you root for. Okay, so this vlog not really going the way I had hoped and planned. It is now Wednesday, so it is March 29th. It is the day before opening day. This vlog really hasn't been going as planned since I first conceptualized it. I had originally wanted to read Ball Four, like I mentioned, and then I was planning on reading a middle grade book called The Change Up because it's also middle grade March, but I ended up having to DNF that one early in the month. And now only about 24 hours from opening day, I've only read 83 pages. Monday, the first day, I ended up reading about 25 pages at night, but I didn't get as much read then. Yesterday, on Tuesday, I read none of this book at all, and I read the remainder of the 83 pages this morning. So that is a third of the way through the book, and this is a fairly short book coming in under 250 pages, so there is the potential that I could still finish this vlog and post it before opening day or on opening day, but I have to say that this book isn't as easy to read as I was hoping it would be. This book reads very much like a parody of noir, so it doesn't read like an actual noir book, but when you see Sam Spade or one of of those guys being parodied by Bugs Bunny or Star Trek The Next Generation or something like that, kind of overly wordy, always adding extra jokes and comedy comedy into how everyone talks always. Our main character is Duffy House. He is now retired from being a sports writer. He talks a lot about reporting and the ethics of reporting, how back in his day 
you didn't talk about people's social lives, you didn't talk about their morals, you talked about the game and how they related to baseball or sport, whatever sport you covered at the time. The author Crab Evers is a pseudonym for a sports writer, so you can see a lot of his own editorializing in this work and how he thinks of sports writing and what he thinks should happen. And actually it was super interesting because he said in the book that the downfall of sports writing actually came after the book Ball Four by Jim Bouton was published because Jim Bouton did dig up people's dirty laundry in that and really told tales out of school. People were really upset when Ball Four came out because it talked about Mickey Mantle and other really famous, revered baseball players in a not very flattering light. Not to mention this book is way out of date and inappropriate. They say inappropriate things about women, about politics, about sexuality, and they use inappropriate language. There's even a part where Duffy is talking to his niece. He's like basically saying she's super hot and just because she's 40 years younger than him and just because she's his niece he's not gonna not look at her in her skimpy pajamas. Total ick. Very strange. So on that note, it's not going as smoothly as I had hoped it was going and I'm not, we'll see if I'm really going to be able to finish this book by opening day. It is the day after opening day, but I have finished Murdering Wrigley Field by Crab Evers. I tried to get this finished by opening day, but I will be posting this video later today, so one day after opening day. The Cubs did win their game yesterday, as did the Mets, so I'm very happy. The Mets are my team, but the Cubs are the team featured in Murder at Wrigley Field. Let me finally tell you what this book is about. This follows Duffy House, who is a aging, retired reporter a sports reporter in Chicago. He loves the Cubs and he's super happy that his sports writing has gotten him in touch with the franchise, with the players, with the people who work at the stadium, with other reporters, especially his friend Red who is a sportscaster and he loves reveling in the fact that he's still a well-known figure in Chicago. He still has a all-access season pass to Wrigley Field. One day he is at Wrigley Field when the unthinkable happens. One of its team members, nicknamed Dream Weaver, is shot and killed in the tunnel between the locker rooms and the field. This sends a total shockwave through everyone who's there. They close down the stadium, they cancel the game, and everyone's wondering how this could have possibly happened. A few days later, the commissioner of baseball calls our main character Duffy into his office and says that Duffy, with all his investigative journalism knowledge and his closeness to baseball and especially his closeness to the team and the players at Wrigley Field, has to work for the commissioner of baseball to solve this case and keep everything kind of on the hush-hush so it doesn't turn into a total disaster for the game of baseball. Duffy reluctantly takes the case. He's too curious to let it go, even though he doesn't think he's entirely qualified, and he's just about to start embarking on his investigation when he remembers that his 20-something young niece is coming to stay with him for the summer before she goes to law school in Chicago. His niece Petey is a tenacious, beautiful, young redhead, and as soon as she realizes that her uncle is going to be investigating the case, she insinuates herself into his investigation. Their investigation takes them to New York, it takes them to California. Eventually, they run into many suspects, many people who potentially wanted Dreamweaver dead, and they have to untangle all the clues and multiple suspects to find out who the murderer actually was. Pretty straightforward 
cozy mystery stuff. It definitely has the cantankerous older protagonist, which is something that I think was popular in cozy mysteries in the past, similar to like Miss Marple, and now is kind of making a resurgence. I think people forget when they're talking about all these, you know, the Thursday Murder Club and Killers of a Certain Age and things like that, that like the original cozy mystery queen was Miss Marple, who was like in her 80s or something. This book was written and takes place in the early 90s and there's definitely problematic elements, things that you would not say or do in a book, and you may definitely cringe at. A little, little bit of racism for sure, but a surprising little amount for when the book was written. Definitely some weird sexual vibes, like Duffy kind of ogling his niece. Definitely misogynistic passages and stuff like that, but what you would expect from a book written in the 90s. That didn't overshadow the book for me. This Cozy Mystery was was told in an interesting way because it wasn't a contained space like most cozy mysteries are. Yes, there was a contained space element to this book, it mostly being set in and around Wrigley Field in Chicago, but it spans all sorts of places and all sorts of people, and you never have a full suspect list until the very end of this book. So each chapter is divided into people's names, which is cool. So we have the first chapter, number one, is of our murder victim, Dream, and then we talk about On the House, who is our main character, and then we go on and on and talk about each individual person that Duffy and Petey come in contact with. I thought that was an interesting way to do it, and there was definitely no way in this cozy mystery to tell who the culprit was, except by vibes. Like, there was no real clues because you were following so many people, so I think following the people in that manner kind of made it make sense. Definitely suspects were talked about from the very beginning, but until you got to their chapter, you didn't get a full glimpse into their character and who they were. So I personally like cozy mysteries that have a little bit more to say about the world, and I think this one did try to do that, but it was the world of baseball. Crab Evers is a baseball writer, and he obviously loves baseball. He obviously put himself into the lead role of Duffy House. He just talks so much about baseball, so much about old players and his ideals and things that he think ruined or made the game obviously like name dropping to the extreme degree of like people that this author probably clearly had met at some point, you know, that in the book Duffy meets. I think that was a real issue for someone who is not a total baseball fanatic. I like baseball. Many of the names that he dropped I did recognize, at least vaguely had an idea of who they were, but not, not enough to know who they played for or what position they played or anything like that, just to know that they were like a baseballer. And I think that anyone with less knowledge than me would have been totally confused. A detriment to the name dropping was because there were so many fake characters in the book and because it was very hard to keep track of them except during their specific chapter. All the name dropping just made it even more muddy and confusing and you didn't know who was a real baller and who was not. I think that the, the whole idea of the book was to be like a baseball fan's cozy mystery, sure, but it was like too much. It, it really dragged down not only the plot but like the minute to minute on the page because it was pretty tedious. And I also think the kind of star chasing way in which the book was written was a detriment because it didn't feel organic and natural and casual. It felt very much star chasing and being like, oh, I know this person that maybe you met once at a party. It felt like an idolization of them but that you were therefore idolized because you were next to those people. I didn't really enjoy that aspect. I did like the relationship between Duffy and Petey and some of the larger players, and obviously this does set us up for a series, and in the back there is a snippet of the next book in the series, and they all have to do with baseball, so obviously Duffy and his law student niece are going to be going around to different ballparks, going around to different franchises, and trying to solve mysteries. Cute idea. And I think if without all the name dropping and star chasing and without the hard-boiled 
over-the-top caricature of like the noir reporter writing, I would definitely continue on in this series. But I think those three elements, too much baseball that you couldn't follow what was going on, too much name dropping and kind of star chasing that it felt disingenuous. And then the style of writing, which was all like similes, think a parody of Casablanca, think a parody of The Thin Man, think a parody of Sam Spade. Those were just too much that I definitely would not seek out to continue on in this series. Maybe if the next books dropped in my lap, I would consider reading them, but I'm definitely not going to be looking for them. And I felt similarly to the book that I DNF'd earlier for this challenge, even before this video started, which was the Change Up Mystery at the World series by John Feinstein. This is a middle grade book and it is a series about two high schoolers who become sports rep reporters and each book takes place in a different sport and this just happens to be the baseball one. I found this in a little free library in the beginning of 2023 and I thought that these two would make a super fun vlog. But I started reading this one in the beginning of March and it was so ungodly boring. I'm not a middle grade reader in general, but that combined with the reporter's kind of lingo that's like forced down your throat and the ridiculous amount of baseball name dropping was just, it's impossible to read for me. I DNF'd it and I will not be continuing. I do definitely plan to finish Ball 4 at some point, but I don't know when. I'm glad that I read Murder at Wrigley Field, and if you're watching this video when it comes out, the next Cubs game is on Saturday. It's an afternoon game, so keep your eye out for that if you want to root for the Cubs. Let me know who your baseball team is. Let me know who you root for. Let me know if you've ever read any sports-related mysteries. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's go Mets, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!